Welcome to PowerCat Live. This is part of our real world customer stories session. And I'm here with my fellow PowerCat, Apostolos Papianu, and Linda Morris and Akash Patel, both from Comores. Hi, you guys. Hello. Hi. Okay. So before we get started, Hi. describe Comores a little bit. What does Comores do? Well, Comores is one of these unique companies. We are a five and a half year old company, which has a 200 year old history. We came out of the DuPont company when they decided to separate their chemicals business. We are well-known makers of Option, Typure, Napion, and Teflon. And these products are environmentally safe, which help them to preserve the planet. Today, we provide solutions into a multitude of industries, industries such as housing and aerospace and automotive, just to name a few. So before we start talking about the tech, which we're all dying to do, describe a little bit of each of your roles at Comores. Well, I am the enterprise business automation leader, which means I have responsibility and accountability for all the work that we will do around automating our back-end business processes across the company, whether it's in the front-end office around sourcing or finance or in IT, or even in the back end in our manufacturing processes. And Akash, how about you? My role is IT application specialist and Power Platform admin. So all the governance, development, architecture or around the Power Platform. We're going to talk about one specific application that you built on Power Platform, but you've got a longer journey moving onto the Microsoft technology stack. Describe how you kind of got here in your transition through Microsoft technology. I'll take that. So, so when we uh, spin off from DuPont, of course, we spin off with a lot of old technology, and one of them was an on-prem data center. And so because we are a much smaller firm, we then had to get our costs under wraps so that we would be able to compete. So one of the first things we did was moved away from that on-prem data center into the Azure cloud, which then led us into things like Microsoft 365. We decided collectively as an organization that Microsoft would be one of the premier platforms that we would invest in when it came to our IT solutions. And then came the Power Platform. And when we looked at it, and so what we needed to do, because I have to tell you this, um, we're one of those shops that started out on Lotus Notes, and we really still need to get out of Lotus Notes, and we believe that the Power Platform is going to get us out of that. You are in very good company there with Lotus Notes. There's a lot of people that are in that same scenario. Now, let's talk specifically about this one scenario uh, that we're going to drill in on today. It's about automating, uh, automating some SAP activities. Can you describe the scenario with SAP and that, the one that you automated? Absolutely. So um, we have this intake process where people come um, for our demand. Well, they'll come in and say, okay, I have this process that I think we can automate. And one of those requests came in from our manufacturing operations out of the Louisville plant. The operators are responsible for doing operator rounds on each shift. and They have to identify the opportunities that we have for maintenance. They then have to go into SAP and put in all the required data for that maintenance. And then based on the information that they put in, there are notifications sent to multiple people across um, the operations that have accountability and responsibility for maintenance. And that could be the maintenance engineers, it could be the process control person. They manually go into SAP and turn those work those notifications into work orders. So the, the production team was taking many hours mm -hmm. um, during the day to actually go into the system, put in all of that information, then run the reporting, and then have that reporting ready for their 12-hour shift turnover. Many times they had so much going on, and this process took so much time that they didn't always have the information they needed when it was time for shift turnover. And I know from working in manufacturing environments, anytime that those employees aren't focused on the plant, they're focused on reporting, you're losing value, right? Because that's, you really want them focusing on where their expertise lies. So tell us about some of the benefits you got by automating this process. So 
one of the biggest benefits is now we have the same data model that we're using mm -hmm. across all of the plant sites when it comes to collecting the notifications, understanding whether those notifications have been turned into work orders, and they're able to then look at the work orders and then decide and prioritize the, the work that has to get done in maintenance. The data is now available to many of those who don't have access to SAP. People are able to now read the data and see the data and be able to make decisions off of the data without having to have SAP. There's also the potential for us to reduce our maintenance costs by 20% because we now know what orders we have. We can prioritize those orders so that the right maintenance is done at the right time. And we're more proactive than reactive when it comes to maintenance. Of course, the processing time is, is was really major for us because we reduced the processing time down to about 90% or even less than that. Because typically at each site, it's taken the people about 40, 45 minutes to run this whole process to get that reporting. Now this process runs in two or three minutes and the information is timely. So when it's time for the shift turnover, the information is reflecting exactly what went on in the previous shift. From a technology perspective, um, I have to tell you, there was nothing in me that believed that we could automate any process associated with SAP because we have a very old version of SAP. So now we know that we have the possibility to automate other workflow practices where we need to input or extract information out of SAP. And we have a repeatable blueprint. Uh, once people began to see what we did with this particular use case, it started to spark additional ideas as to other use cases that will be beneficial and are quick hits, if you will, around using the Power Platform and integrating it in with our SAP. That's great. I mean, that's part of the magic, right? Is you you show it once and you know people really see the value of it and it starts spreading. And this is a great template to, for a lot of people to learn from. Yes. And so did I hear you right? So you've got increased global visibility, you've got 20% reduction in maintenance costs and up-to-date data. Those are the benefits. That's yes. no joke. I know you've got other RPA tools in your environment. Why did you choose Power Automate Desktop for the RPA portion of this? Well, our dream, or I should say my dream, but <laughs> I would say our dream is to really drive citizen maker um, development across our organization. Like most IT organizations, it's only a few of us, but there's a lot of demand and a lot of need when it comes to automation. And so we invested heavily into the Power Platform to be able to then drive citizen development across manufacturing, across sourcing, across finance. And so in order for us to prove that our investment, the view is worth the climb, right? Um, we had to then show that, yep, we do have use cases and the Power Platform can drive those use cases and allow us to do the automation that we need to automate, not just with SAP, but with other old backend systems that mm -hmm. we have. And so we did do some investment in some other enterprise tools, but you know, with those tools, you have to pay by the bot, right? <laughs> Every time you put in a new bot, you have to pay a little more. And that changes when it comes to using this power platform. That's great, that makes sense. So now, let me turn then to, uh, on the PowerCat side, Apostolus, Right, you're our expert in doing these types on automating processes against SAP, and I know you have a few things in your toolkit. Can you tell us a little bit about the analysis that went into automating this particular process for Comores and why you chose the route you did? Absolutely, Phil. So there are, of course, many flavors of SAP today out in, in you know in the world. There are different versions of them. There are also different type of user interfaces. There are so many different solutions on the SAP side. And I think what we have done here at Commerce was, uh, yeah, looking at the process, looking at the system, seeing also, you know, what type of authentication was used for that. And then uh, it was quite clear that we have to go, you know, one of these three routes we are, which are currently available. The first one on top is the SAP ERP connector, which is an SAP certified connector that we ship out of the box together with the other 450 connectors in Power Platform. The SAP ERP connector supports um, SAP ECC and S4 HANA systems and typically connects, of course, through an on-premise data gateway if your machine is behind a firewall. So once a connection has been established, you will be able to invoke any bar or RFCs uh, that are available in the target system. The second option is to build a custom connector that connects to HTTP endpoints or OData endpoints, which have been exposed via the SAP NetWeaver gateway or any API management platform. So depending on the API hosting strategy, you might or might not need an on-premise data gateway. 
And the third option is RPA or Robotic Process Automation, where you can leverage UI automation techniques to mimic user interactions. This allows you to automate from simple to very complex SAP processes and is of course a, a non-intrusive way of uh, automating and integrating. Now with these options in mind, we've of course tried to map the use case to the different options we have. Started with the SAP ERP connector, looking into that, identified very quickly that it's not suitable to process hundreds of thousands of records through an, uh, you know, synchronous API calls. There was also no out-of-the-box BAP URFC available that can extract all notification at once. Um, this would have required the involvement of uh, the internal SAP basis team because of some prerequisites which are required to be installed. And it is more of an SAP's me play uh, to begin with. Then we looked into the custom connector route, which we had to disregard very early in the process because the Kimors team didn't have access to an SAP NetWeaver gateway or API management platform that exposes these work orders and notifications. And the last option and the most uh, suitable for our use case was the RPA route, which is what I said in the beginning, a non-intrusive turnkey solution that allows you to mimic the user interface uh, without lots of uh, requirements and infrastructure requirements and, and uh, prerequisites on the Power Automate or on the SAP side. And going the RPA route allowed also the Kimors team to use SAP's own recording and playback engine uh, where they recorded the business process and then used the outcome in a Power Automate desktop action, have supplied some dynamic parameters and were able to orchestrate and automate that business process. This didn't require any previous technical SAP integration know-how or the involvement of an SAP basis team. All they needed to do is find someone with the domain knowledge who know the SAP steps, record them, and then use that outcome in the overall uh, desktop flow automation. This also allows fusion teams to work together with uh, pro developers, citizen automation developers, IT pros, and the business to develop sophisticated automation solutions uh, with low-code, no-code tooling. For the Comores team, you work with PowerCat, right? We advise, and our goal is to accelerate you, but but you built this. How long did it take to build this out? Uh, it, it, it was really about a 30-day journey, if you will, from end to end, from the time that the business knocked on our door and said, hey, we need some help here, and we met with them on several times, and were able to get um, what I call a, a coach from Microsoft, to help guide us, that was Apostolist. And with his guidance and his counsel, um, Akasha was the one, he's really the brains of the operation that built the solution from end to end. So before we get into the brains of the operation, because I know we're, I'm resisting diving right into the tech, but this is more than just a technical problem, right? There is a lot of business context right, that you have to understand in order to make this as successful as you have. So before we dive into the tech, tell us a little bit about the, how, how did you gather the context to, to really understand the problem? Well, when we met with the team, we asked them to first walk us through exactly what it is you do. Don't change anything you do. Right. Walk us through the way you do it. Even if you make a mistake, walk us through the way you do it. Does that help us to start to form from an architectural perspective? What would be the best way to do this? Again, we had angst around, okay, we've never really connected <laughs> on RPA with, with SAP this way, right? Right. Because uh, you know, with our SAP, one of the things we were concerned about is when you're running certain transactions, you have a lot of things that just keep popping up. Mm. And so your automation has to deal with all of that pop-up. And that's, it has to know how to do with all of those interruptions. And so um, when something like that would happen, we would say, okay, why is that popping up? What do you do when that actually pops up? And why do you need this data? Why are you not pulling all the data? How, how they manually massage the data so that they can then make decisions from the data. It, it creates these notifications, but those notifications have to be turned into work orders. So quite a few notifications were being left and not turned into um, work orders for maintenance. And so the real key here was to get the appropriate um, orders to do the maintenance. Course, and, yeah. and once we knew the biggest challenge, then we were able to take it from there. Um, and like I said, we had several meetings with them. We would go back and ask questions and they would say, well, what I really want to do, <laughs> um, you would get that a couple of times. And so that helped. We changed a little bit from that, what I really want to do. But for the most part, um, they were the ones that told us and explained to us what their use case was. And I love how those types of conversations build a connection between you and the people whose processes and you're trying to automate and your problems you're trying to solve, right? That building that connection early will, is what makes projects like this so successful. 
Right. And the other thing I'll add too, when you're working with teams like this, um, when you say, oh, I can automate what you do, they're like, oh, time out. Yes. You, you can't really automate what I do. I have judgment in what I do. And you know, yeah. you know, the bot can, can offer judgment. Um, and so some of it is having the, the right kinds of conversation and using the right language so that they understand I'm helping you to, um, to automate those mundane tasks that you do every day that are not really adding value. You just have yeah. to do them from administrative perspective in order to be able to add value. So we want to get you out of having to do those things so that you can only work on those value adding tasks. That is such an important point. That's a terrific point. And probably almost as important as any of the technology that's going to underlie this is right is how do you make sure that you get the get the right people on board but let's turn to you akash the brain um so how much power automate desktop and sap experience did you have when you went into this so phil i had a little experience with the power automate desktop but i did not have any experience with the sap or the data flow so it was a challenging journey for me in 30 days uh, learning the sap and the power platform data flow yeah, well, and, and I think that's an important part that you brought up, right? Because this solution is really like a power platform solution, right? Dataverse, Power Automate Desktop, Cloud Flows, Data Flows, Power BI. And I know some things, some of those aspects you had experience in, but I know a lot of them were new. So let's let's see what you built in the 30 days that you had to come to speed on this. We start with the Power Automate Cloud Flow trigger that is scheduled to run every eight hours. For the sake of this demo, I have switched it to a manual trigger so we can follow along. The trigger calls a desktop flow that automatically extracts SAP notification and work order through an RPA flow that I have built with the Power Automate desktop. Here is the RPA flow that does the SAP extraction. I have recorded the step in SAP and reused the generated script in Power Automate desktop to drive the SAP automation. Here, we see the desktop flow in action, where it connects to SAP, applies relevant notification and work order filters, and exports the data to CSV file on a OneDrive for Business. The raw CSV files are then cleaned up and brought into shape within the same Power Automate desktop RPA flow as the extraction. This data preparation process is important for consistent data injunction to Power Platform data flows but more to that in a second. After the desktop flow has completed, I'm calling a child flow that will kick off a Power Platform data flow. So this has made it easy to kick off an automatic data refresh in data hours. This data flow is ingesting and transforming SAP data to fit to the targeted data model in data hours. The final result of the automation is a Power BI dashboard that's connected to a Dataverse table in a directory mode against TDS Dataverse endpoint. This now gives the required operational visibility to our plant maintenance team and all that leveraging low code capabilities within the Power Platform. Thanks for that demo. I can see how this really is a foundation for you to build off for other uses. And I also know that it's just one part of your overall digital transformation Power Platform and the Microsoft cloud in general. So what's next for Comores? Well, one of the things we're gonna do relative to this particular use case is now we'll leverage this use case across all of the other plant sites. Remember I said this started with our Louisville plant site. The way we built it, we built it so that every plant site could use it. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at using Process Advisor. Process Advisor was not available to us yet um, when we tried this, but we believe that if we um, use Process Advisor, the things that might be different at the other sites, then we'll also be able to ascertain if there's other bottlenecks in the process that we might be able to streamline and make the process run even more. Also, as a result of this, and we shared it, um, we're now going to go back to the drawing board and we're going to start with operator rounds. And so we're going to use the power platform to get a standardized way in which we do operator rounds. So the operator rounds then mm. feeds into your shift notes and your shift notes then feed into your shift turnover. And so we're gonna use the power platform to actually build applications to do all of those across all of our plan sites. And so we'll just continue to build up our power, power platform. Um, of course, we're gonna drive our citizen maker 
where we're teaching people how to use these tools so that they can get better at using the tools. And then we'll be responsible. We'll mean in my, my team that has the professional developers will be responsible for putting in automations like this that are end to end. It's it's a fantastic journey, and it sounds like you guys have plans to even take it even further. So thanks for taking the time to tell us about it. Yes. We appreciate the opportunity, and we appreciate the coaching and the counseling that we got from Apostolus. I know I learned a lot, but um, I'm quite confident that Akash learned way more than I did. <laughs> he was the brains behind our operation and the one that was doing all of the development.